Hi, everybody. My name is Fabian Cola, and welcome to the Montreal International Black Film Festival, celebrating its 16th edition. This year, the festival will be online from September 23rd until October. Fourth, the Montreal International Black Film Festival is presented by Quebecor in collaboration with Desjardins. So if you haven't got your passes yet, that's the best time to do so right now. You can go to montrealblackfilm.com. Today, we're going to be talking to two amazing people, and they are behind one of the greatest films of the festival, the opening film of the festival, The Cuban. So we are right away going to jump and dive into this conversation, this Q&A. Um, and I'm honored, I'm honored to be presenting these two people. The first person is the director of the film, The Cuban. By the way, we have a French and an English version for you. So um, you can choose whatever you want at the Montreal Black Film Festival on, the, on September 23rd um, to um, embark on this opening night with us. So we have with us Sergio uh, Navarreta. Sergio, did I tell, did I say your name right? You did indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> and then we have also Lou Gossett Jr. Hi, Lou. Hello. Ça va? Ça va bien? Ça va bien. And let me remind everybody that Lou Gossett Jr. is a legend in, in himself. He, he is an Oscar winning actor. He got, I mean, we will, we will dive into all you have won in your life, Lou. It's an honor to have you here with us. Actually, Lou, the last time we had you, I think it was in Toronto two years ago at the Toronto Black Film Festival. You were our guest in honor, of honor. That's right. Exactly, exactly. How are you doing? Yes, ma'am. How, how is it how is it for you? How have, how have you been doing ever since that this oh, you know well, all this coronavirus and everything? Well uh, well I think it's necessary for us to do some thinking and it's a quest to ourselves and come up with a common answer. And the common answer for me, uh, joining people with, with like Sergio and others and, and other films that are coming out, we really need one another desperately for our mutual salvation. And then the arts benefit from stories like that. And so the, the, the Cuban is right in the middle of that kind of example mm -hmm. of uh, what we can do to one another positively for the salvation of us all. Um, my, my hat's off to Haiti to, to coming up with a project like uh, Fabien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, Sergio, I, I, I can imagine how much fun you guys have been having on the set of this film, but before, for diving um, into everything, well, first of all, welcome to the Montreal International Black Film Festival. Thank and thank you, you so thank you. much. Thank, thank you, you so much for bringing this film in the world. I think, you know, some films are just necessary films that we need to watch to be uplifted, yeah. to be entertained in a whole new way. And your film, Sergio, The Cuban, is exactly it. So yeah. I wanted to know, I mean, the story is just touching, but at the same time, it's so, you know, enlightening, you know, it's, it's something that transports you. So I just love it. Um, I'd like to know, can you, for people that have not seen the film, can you describe the film in your own words, The Cuban? Sure. I, thank you, first of all, for having us. Um, it's such an honor. This festival is so important. You're on your 16th year and uh, what a huge accomplishment. So thank you. Um, the Cuban is um, it's a movie about a young Afghan nurse who has an encounter, an un unlikely encounter with one of her patients uh, named Luis, who is enigmatic and non-responsive. And through their connection and through the power of music and through uh, her stimulating him through food and, and just compassion, frankly, um, he starts to come back to life. And we discover that he uh, he has dementia and Alzheimer's and uh, he was a one-time famous Cuban musician. So we learn a lot about his history and we learn a lot about uh, how they help one another because I think uh, both characters' arcs are interconnected and um, it's such a beautiful exchange between a young Afghan nurse and um, an elderly, uh, you know, Cuban, uh, former Cuban musician. So 
But I, I, I wanted to know, how does this film come about? Like, how did you get to, to do this? Um, it started off as a short film idea. It's just the, the impetus for it was really, um, we were coming off a big animation movie and I was exhausted and creatively looking for something to sink my teeth into. And this young actress, Anna Golia, uh, approached me and said, why don't we do a short film? And I said, that would be wonderful. Um, because a short film has no stakes. It's like, it's just for the pure love of the art of making a movie. And then um, the first person I thought of was Mr. Gossett. And, uh, you know, there was a whole story about how we finally got the project to him, but it, it eventually evolved into a feature film. And, uh, you know, I think three and a half years later, we're, we're here we are presenting it. And uh, it's been an incredible and surreal ride given all the circumstances, which we can get into. But I mean, we're in the middle of a global pandemic and a real reckoning with Black Lives Matter. And I mean, there's just been so many things that have happened mm -hmm. here. We'll that, talk about that, we'll talk about all that, yeah. But, but Louis, yeah. How, how, did, how, did you, how did you feel after reading the script? Actually, if I understand correctly, did you, were you handed the script of a short film or you had the feature script? Uh, well, well they, they sent me all kinds of stuff. This, this Italian director and this, this woman from Afghan, they followed me around a while. And finally I gave them a chance to, to talk to me and they convinced me. And when uh, they finally put together their energy, was so important that I had to give them the time. And when they gave me the time, then I said, well, I'm going to give you my name and sell it if you can. And they did sell it. They got the money and we went through the experience of doing this movie. And there's nothing but such, it's, it's, a, it's a flashback from my teenage years. Uh. Afro-Cuban music was at its, at its best. So the Tito Puentes and the Tito Rodriguez's and the Machitos and, and all those people came back to my life. And, and I was transfixed with the Afro-Cuban music once again. It's magic music, uh -huh. magic music, and there's great dances with it, and it becomes a very pleasant experience. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, you know, you 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 gotta you gotta face the reality, Sergio, that Lou Gossett Jr. is, you know, somebody that won. He has won an Oscar, mm -hmm. an Academy Award. He has won um, an Emmy Award, a Golden Globe. Yeah. Even have I think um, a star on a whole uh, on the Hollywood um, Hollywood Walk of Fame. I mean, how did it? How did how was it working with a legend? I needed the job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this might be a dream come true for you, <laughs> a director like you. Tell me about it. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, working with. I mean, Mr. Gossett is a part of cinema history, and uh, the weight of that uh, transfers onto the set. So it's the the way we all approached our game. We may not have given 110 percent if Mr. Gossett wasn't there, uh. or some of the other great actors that we had on set, or Hilario Duran who performed the music. I mean, I think. One thing, the older I get, the more I learn that, you know, that part of the game of this job is to surround yourself the best of the best. And it's like, it's like the NBA, you know, it's a team effort, it's a team sport. And um, it really, you know, as soon as he landed on set, I saw everybody's spirits going up. And then with, you know, playing Afro-Cuban jazz before every take, mm -hmm. and, you know, just the energy on set determines everything. It, it, all that energy carries into the editing room. And I think that's the, the the ethereal intangible part that people forget is that really there's an energy when you're creating any kind of art form uh that we're all feeding off so so it was incredible well, why was it important that you guys um do this film i mean first you and then after that i'd like to know about louis as well why was it important that you tell this story sergio because you could have chosen another story, another thing, and you have your, you know, films on, uh, of your own. So why yeah. was it important, this script, this film? I mean, so a few reasons. One is, uh, you know, it was very personal. I was dealing with the loss of my own father that came suddenly when he was only 71. So there was, a, you know, all that guilt around, you know, what if I had one more day? What, what other stories died with him? So it was all that kind of energy and, and it was cathartic in that way, it was healing and a way for me to process that. But also I just got tired of the, this notion of just making a movie for the sake of making a movie, uh -huh. you know, gratuitous violence or, I mean, 
you watch the news and we have we have enough of that. And I want to continue working on projects that uplift the spirit. So here we are presenting a film about also, you know, a musician with Alzheimer's, but it's uplifting and it's, yeah. we hope that it, it brings people's spirits up, not down because, you know, the stats around Alzheimer's are, are kind of depressing. I mean, it's, it's a really, um, you know, it's, it's an epidemic that's, that's expanding at lightning speed and nobody knows what to do about it. And here, here are scientists studying, you know, the power of music. Like you don't need a drug. You can actually play music that, that they'll respond to. And that's as powerful as any pill that you can give them. So. I was telling Louis, we were while we were talking before this. I was saying, it, 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 is it all it takes? Um, love, because he was transformed when he got all the love from this Afghan um, young Afghan nurse or woman mm -hmm. and music. Is it, is it is it all it takes for for people with Alzheimer's? For well, people who are suffering, suffering. Uh, may, may I help with that? Uh, I found in in, in my life that it's not just all it takes, it's the cap of a deeper iceberg that's connected. So our thoughts and our actions are connected with our health, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. So connection, connected tissue, it's a deeper situation. It's my wish that mankind goes back to its initial love and caring for one another. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very catching and we need one another even now, there's mm -hmm. only one left for our salvation. That mm -hmm abiding original love that we need to jump on the plane to do not invent but join the group like it's happening for a mutual salvation that's where health this that's where health comes back and diseases disappear mm -hmm. why was it what was it for you what 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 was it that made you say yes after all because everybody's trying to convince you every day that everyone wants you in their movie and everybody has great script and you don't say yes to everybody why did you say yes to sergio why what is this movie that uh, you wanted to tell us sorry that they wanted and they followed it for long enough so i want to say what happened to these people they were full of wanting me to join them and they convinced me mm -hmm. I and open the ears and they finally convinced me because they never gave up. Mm -hmm. and I'm that glad was an interesting I story. In my mind, to the entire thing that I have memories from my high school days, Afro-Cuban music. Mm. What beautiful music. And it opened up a whole cluster of things back in my old friends in school and some of my Latin friends here in, in, in California. I, I bonded more than the movie with, with some of our Latin friends uh, that I grew up with. Very nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sergio, was it was it hard to um, make a film with music and musicians, and to, so you were managing a set with actors, but also with musicians and real music, and then going so many places? How, how tough was that for you? Uh, it's always a challenge. You're always, you know, riddled with fear every time you wake up in the morning about to go on set. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety around it, but. Um, I think part of it is, is delusion. You you have to literally be a little bit delusional to do this. Because if, if you start looking at the odds against you, man, you won't get out of bed, you know? So especially with this film where, you know, the financing almost fell apart. Uh, Tell me about that. How, how so? Like, how, how long did it take you to put all that together? And t tell us about that. Get us behind the scene. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... Uh, the music came first. Mr. Gossett signed on first. Then uh, the Alessandro Pachon started developing the script, doing research with the doctors, the scientists that are studying the effects of music on the mind. Mm -hmm. um, then I started working with Hilario on the music simultaneously. So that's something that uh, helped me through is having the music ahead of time, because then you can plan your your scenes, and it also uh, you know you use music therapy on yourself in a way. Because uh, when you're having a bad day, put on Afro-Cuban jazz. It'll lift you right up. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. And then we, we just had people around that were like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, commit, put up the money. And then, you know, we keep saying, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're, you know, you sign the contract, where's the check? And then there's no check. And so oh, yeah. it, it, you have all these balls in the air. And then finally the real, the right people came to the table and, um, and, you know, that's another lesson I learned is you can't work with anybody. You have to have the right partners, the right people, the right collaborators that believe in it. And distribution is the same. If you have the people that don't want to work, 
and yeah. when I throw it up on a catalog, it's not gonna, you know. But but tell me something. Um, is any it uh, financed like in the Canadian system with uh, Telefilm Canada and then CMF? And did yeah. you go through that Canadian system? And it was hard, even though you had a great script, and then um, Lou Gossett Jr. attached to that. It, it it was still hard to raise that. Why was that? No, the, but the, the I think the government support was there, and it just continued to build. I mean, to this day, they're still you know extremely supportive. I'm here in Ottawa now doing a screening for first um, first responders as a way to give back, um, and that was you know the the minister of culture was the one who, who uh, you know kind of put it together and is inviting us. So the government support has been wonderful. Uh, I think it really it just boils down to the merits of the project. You know, the, the story, who's in it, the, who the attachments are, all that stuff. I mean, and, and years of hard work of building relationships. So they had to be able to trust us to be able to pull it off. So that was, you know, but we're really lucky in Canada. I, I can imagine in the U.S. I mean, unless you have private investment and pre sales mm -hmm. it's really hard to get a movie made. Oh, but totally, totally, yeah. totally. Um, Louis, I wanted to ask you because we, we have some uh, headline news a um, few, few days ago about the um, Academy of Motion Pictures and Science, um, um, which decided to change the rules um, to be qualified now for best picture category. Um, you know, the film needs to include two of the following women, visible minorities, LGBTQ people, um, people with disabilities, uh, in either behind the scene or in front of the camera. So I wanted to have your take on what do you think of all this? Um, what was your reaction when you heard that? Is it good? Is it uh, same old? What, what do you think? I think it's very exciting. I think that the, the, the members of the Academy and the you know, is very different. So then they're, they're getting their serves. And uh, so, so they're the science, science is happening in sports and in film and, and television and, and stuff. So it's going in the natural direction of representing us all. So mm -hmm. it's a thing, revolutionary at all. It's a natural growth. It excites me a lot. Just now, because they're, they're after bald and they're black men. <laughs> but and, and do you feel like it's gonna really change stuff, or people will be like, okay, I don't care. I'm not gonna be in the in the, this category. And what do you, do you think? It's changing, even as we're talking now. It's changing. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought too. We all celebrate that, so that when we come out of that uh, pandemic, we come out from hitting on the ground running into the right direction to continue it uh, with a new mentality, a new consciousness. It's happening while we're in the pandemic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When we get out of those pandemics, we get back to work. It's exactly. very, very exciting. Very exciting for me too. What is your take on that, Sergio? Do you think that will affect our films here in Canada as well? Do you think that will mm -hmm. um, have some ramification here for our own um, galas and awards? Hundred percent. I think. I mean, if people need to, to hit, be hit in the head with a hammer uh, to get the message. I mean, we're in 2020, still having this conversation. It's it's insane. Um, so I think it's it's opened up a door for conversation. Uh, in the U.S., the racial tensions and barriers are still pretty strong. In Canada, we probably hide it a little better. But um, you know, it's it's enough is enough, and I think it's it's time to have those honest conversations and. Uh, we don't want to hear things from foreign sales companies like, well, your two leads are black. So, you know, you know we're not going to get foreign sales. Like enough of that. You know, we just want to tell good stories with incredible artists. And um, I think it's just the beginning anyways. I, I agree with Mr. Gossett. I think it's the beginning and, and the door's opening. Now it's a matter of what we do with, with the opportunity. Hopefully we rise to the occasion. The question now is that we have people who are sensitive to our beliefs. And everybody that has never got an opportunity to getting their opportunity. But also, there's a new society now, which is closed, and they're opening the door slightly. And if you will agree with them, then they'll let you in. If you don't agree, they close the door. My philosophy, the whole door has to be turned down. There's got to be no opening and closing the door. We all belong, and we all need to be taken care of. Uh -huh. My dream of film, a dream of music, the dream of the world. And it's happening even as we speak, so there's no frustration about it. It's happening. Let's cooperate with Fantastic. And uh, we are in the middle of another pandemic um, also, 
which is uh, not just the coronavirus, but all this resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys feel that that had a direct impact on all this that is uh, being fast forwarding or um, how, how do you feel this has an influence on our industry? Go ahead, speak, sir. I think it's a perfect storm. I think it, uh, I haven't had a lot of time to reflect on the pandemic because I purposely kept myself busy so that I didn't have to face the trauma, the, just the reality of it. But the positive is that the silver lining is that it did accelerate a lot of conversations that needed to be had a long time ago. So whether it's Black Lives Matter or whether it's, you know, streaming services are taking over and theaters are dying, all those conversations were already in the air. So, you know, I think all the, the pandemic did is really forced us to look at ourselves and look at our families, our communities and make decisions about what's important to us. And um, we don't have excuses anymore about, oh, I was busy and oh, I, I care about black people. I put it on my website. Well, now we need action. You know, mm -hmm. put your money where your mouth is and let's see action. And I think 2020, that's what it represents for me. I think everyone's just tired of, of talk and not just with Black Lives Matter, just in general, just mm -hmm. in general with even gender relations, whatever content we, you know, I, it feels like the seventies in a way, it feels like a bit of a Renaissance. Like I feel like really great projects are going to come after this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because w when I was referring to a second pandemic, I, I met uh, not the black, black lives matter, but I met the um, systemic racism. That's for me, another pandemic that we are fighting constantly and we've been fighting for the longest time. That's not new. It's just that that, all the latest uh, developments, you know, just put it back in the conversation in a more forceful way. So, um, and we feel that here in Canada as well. It, it's very interesting because I like to see what's happening in the state and then, you know, what's happening here and then see the ramifications and then mm -hmm. the similarities and everything else. So, um, Louis, how did you guys, because you are living in the States, we are in Canada, how did you guys um, live this reality. Can you get us to how it all happened where you are? Well, there's enough of a consciousness now that we grew up together, regardless of what our parents think, uh, we're back to the good old slavery mentality. It's not that way anymore. Mm -hmm. inter inter interacting in schools and in nightclubs and in the, in the teams, and it's an obvious growth of us meeting one another desperately. It's a true future of America. Remember when I used to say that 10 years ago, I wouldn't work because there was a fear. There was a, a thing of, what are we going to do with this new kid? I've been doing this now for over 60 years, and I've watched the change. I'm very happy to see the change pleasantly. But it's not just Black Lives Matter, but that's his first. But eventually, all lives matter. And mm -hmm. all lives matter is our only key to our salvation. We'll get to that. But right now, first things first, Black Lives do matter. And you can see how much is, 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 is in, in involved in that because they've never had anything but that. They couldn't say anything because they had to be afraid of being disciplined. Now everybody, the kid that put his knee, Colin, uh, because he wanted, now everybody's put their knee down in agreement with him. That's how the movement is growing in a positive direction. I'm very it's excited. Human, it's humanity, humanity fighting for, against uh, racism. The only thing that's gonna save us, that's all that's left, that's all we need. Oh, yeah, love. That's so, right. I'm Sergio, okay. um, if we if we um, get back to to your film, um, I, I wanted to. I have so many questions for this film because for you about this film because this film is just amazing. It's a. I think people that love people will love jazz, will love music, will enjoy the mu the, the film. People yeah. who wanna. Um, see a story of somebody fighting with Alzheimer's, you know, somebody, you know, and, and we'll, 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 we'll just dive in and then appreciate your movie as well. Like there's something for everybody in your film. Yeah. I, I, was it a fine line to be like, okay, I don't want the music to o overshadow the story of, you know, that person living with Alzheimer's, but at the same time, I, how was it to balance this so it doesn't become like a film only about music or the other way around? I think it's, yeah, it's a fine balance and uh, having a great editor like Jane McRae helps because 
you know, we can talk about things and, you know, it's too much, too little. But ultimately, I think with every story, it's about characters. And these two characters found each other. They both feel isolated, marginalized, and they have a common language, which is music. Um, and I think that's very universal. I mean, we could screen this film in uh, Tanzania or or in uh, Mumbai, and I think people will feel a visceral, like a same same kind of reaction to it. Um, but there's something to be said to tie into your earlier point about Cuban culture, which is when you go to Cuba, they're Cuban first. They don't um, they don't really talk about r racial tensions unless you really get into it. But they're Cuban first, and and um, the music uh, carries that culture so beautifully. So they're able to transcend all barriers through through music. Like when you look at the interracial bands there, I mean, it's just it's a common language, and it's like Haiti is this, is very similar. Uh, the art and the music is what what carries the, the culture, and um, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's we can learn a lot from them. The fact that you know they live on so little, but they're generally very happy i mean that's that was the takeaway for me i'm just like i need to re-examine my life because uh -huh. in their eyes i have it all you know uh and i'm still struggling with this idea of happiness and fulfillment and everything they're just happy being on the street and and you know playing guitar and i mean it's just such a joyful culture yeah in yeah. haiti when you ask somebody that has nothing somebody on the street having nothing you say how are you today that person will tell you not worse than yesterday, you know? I'm, I'm not worse, that means I'm better. Like, it's, <laughs> you have nothing, but every day is better and tomorrow will be even better. Even better today. So that's, uh, that's a bit how we see that um, maybe in the South or in developing countries, always this uh, hope that tomorrow will be better. And that keeps us alive, actually. Um, Sergio, I have to applaud you for being um, a Caucasian filmmaker, taking a risk on a film with a lot of diversity. And not just Lugosa Jr., but you also put forward the Cuban culture. You also put forward an Afghan um, lead mm -hmm. um, woman. You also had Asian people there. I mean, tell me about the casting process. Why this choice? Why? First of all, I can't really take credit. It's not something that I think about consciously. Um, to be honest, I just, it's, it's, uh, it's just a, a reflection of who we are growing up in a multicultural city like Toronto. Uh -huh. That's it, you know? Um, I was very lucky to have parents that were very inclusive and open and curious. So we would have our Indian neighbors on one side sharing their food and their culture with us. My other neighbors were Jamaican. So my best friend was Jamaican. So it's like, for us, it's very natural, very normal. and. Uh, you know, it's weird because as a Southern Italian, I never saw myself as white or Caucasian. So I guess it's whatever, with whatever what you, you are, Sergio. Whatever you identify with is, is what, what shapes <laughs> you, right, as a person. But yeah, I mean, yeah, anyways, we'll get, we, we can get into all that later, but, yeah. No, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I, it's, it's just that, it's just being Canadian growing up in Toronto and knowing these people, knowing these cultures and wanting to tell those stories. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing, really. Were you impressed, Louis, at all by this, uh, this cast, the, the vibe in there? Because that was a Canadian film. It's, you, you, you've done, you've worked with everybody, but yeah. that was a Canadian vibe maybe. So diversity in Canada. It's wonderful to see. It's nice to be about It's a great edit. Like, and it's not about the work. We're all devoted to do the work. And it's a breath of fresh air, I tell you that. And the people are brilliant. They come to work with an with open mind and, and very artistic. And I've never had a negative right. time here in Florida, in Florida, in, in Canada. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about my friend in Florida for a minute. I but wish they, we had their weather. Well, <laughs> the word. Yeah. that's the word. But it, it, bless it. Yeah. Uh, it's a great pleasure. What, 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 um, what about the casting, Sergio? Did you do the casting here? I mean, when I say here, I mean in Canada. Or was Lou the only person coming from the States? How was everything? Get us behind the scene. We want to know all the details. A lot of, lot of dinners, a lot of wine. <laughs> <laughs> we had, so um, Lauren Holly, um, 
it was born in America, but she's Canadian now, uh, living in Canada. Uh, Shori Agdashlu is uh, is Iranian, uh, born in Iran, but American. Uh -huh. um, the rest of the cast is is Canadian, and uh, I didn't do auditions because I don't like the audition process. I mean, uh -huh. you just know the artist's work and say, you know, I, I really see or envision that artist, that actor in that role. Um, there was a few roles that I had to reach out to some uh, agents that I knew saying, hey, I have this this part, what do you think? And I had some ideas, but everybody else, the, the roles were written for them and you don't normally get oh, that. Wow. So I was very lucky that, you know, we're gonna write a role for Lou Grasso Jr. and hopefully he'll say yes. And, or Sharia Gatchlu or whatever. I mean, it's, uh, it's a different kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a lot of luck and a lot of perseverance. And like Mr. Gossett said at a TIFF uh, talk that he did, uh, never give up. So we took that to heart. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to complete all that from the script to Mr. Gossett to, to, to actually shooting and doing that? Was it a long process? Not, I mean, relatively short compared to most films. Like we've developed projects over 10 years that still didn't get made. You know, this film came together I would say in a, two years. Oh, okay. Of, that yeah. was really quick. Yeah. Was really, really quick. You should be very proud of the result because it's amazing. It's an amazing film. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you just join us, we are talking about the Cuban, Le Cuban in French, and it's opening the Montreal International Black Film Festival 16th edition on September 23rd. And it will stay on the platform, on the web platform where we're screening the films until October 4th. So, you better grab your pass to come and um, join us and, and to see the film actually um, as of uh, September 23rd. And then we are having the honor of welcoming Lou Gossett Jr., Oscar winner Lou Gossett Jr. and Sergio Navarita right here. And we're talking about the film and then the creative process and everything else. Um, Mr. Mr. Gossett, I, I like when you're saying Mr. Gossett because I say Louis. The first time I said, you can say Louis. And did you oh, come Louis, 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 the whole time it's only the Italians from Brooklyn that call him Louie. Louie. <laughs> yeah. So, so where did you guys film, shoot the film? Was it like um, all over the place? So where, where did you guys have to, to, to go and to do that? That's for you, Sergio. We, uh, we shot in, in Brantford, Ontario, in Paris, Ontario, and Havana, Cuba. So we we oh, stayed. So you really went to Cuba. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You can't fake that. Um, yeah, we we spent a week, well, a month prepping, but a week shooting, and uh, but everything else was in Canada, and we built the whole production around that nursing home because that was our home base. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there for a good part of the shoot, two weeks maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, that became our home, and then everything else was close by. Louis, was it the first time you were shooting in, in Cuba? And how was the experience for you with the Cuban people and the Cuban vibe? You asking me? Yes. I was not in Cuba during the shooting, but I've been in Cuba many times before because of my pain. Oh, that's was true, because the, it was a flashback thing, right, uh, Sergio? I hear it's a but there, there's another actor playing. <laughs> it's just a flashback. Cuba because I could go from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh la la! Uh, before we started, I was telling Louis how, uh, how how much he looked good today. I, I'm seeing it. I mean, he's uh, as al always looked like this. So yeah, uh, you see, you see, Louis. I even uh, uh, mi mixed you up with the 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 flashback guy in the in the. <laughs> you know, have to see the they have to see the film to understand what we're talking about. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so I, I heard so many stories about Cuba. Um, being kind of a, a bit difficult for business sometime, and especially when you're coming from America. Can you tell us how you managed to go and shoot over there um, with a whole crew and everything else? Is it easy to do business in Cuba or is it a myth? It's, it's a challenge. It's a it's challenge. Um, we have to find, so there's three companies that are owned by the government production companies. So we met with one of them that we found to be a suitable partner. Uh, you know, you agree to some price and you start talking about logistics and it's very different. Look, I can't, 
pretend that it's like here because it's not. Like I had my first AD and my cinematographer, Siliana, we planned everything. But you, when you're there, you have to throw your plans away and yeah. you literally have to, whatever is thrown at you that day, you got to work with it and you got to be quick on your feet. Um, but the people are just so good. Mm. Forgive all the, you know, the challenges, like getting a light bulb is a massive undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, but they do it with a smile. You know, one day in the club, we said we need fog, like smoke. And we see a guy smoking a cigarette, blowing it into the exhaust system. And then <laughs> he cuts a can in half and he lights some kind of smoke bomb thing. And next thing you know, the club is diffused with smoke. I mean, those are the crazy oh, things yeah. that, that you're just kind of like, did that really happen? Uh, but it works. And they give you the result. And they do it with a big smile. So... Yeah, I mean, it took me a while to get used to their style of doing things, and you have to really slow down. Mm -hmm. But no problem with the insurances and everything else. Like, it was pretty pretty cool to go and do that. Okay, so like, you, know. to you gotta know you have to have cash in, in, in on hand, and uh, you, you learn how they do things, And but you, you need somebody there. We needed a fixer. We had a great producer on the ground. His father, you know, ran the company. You need that kind of trust because otherwise, it, it, you know, it's a mess. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so, so that means Louis, you you went back to Toronto. So, wait, wait a minute, that was before or after we invited you in Toronto at the Toronto Black Film Festival? Probably after. It's after, eh? I think I. When did you invite me? Two years ago, was it? I think it was last. No, that wasn't last year. I think last year. Can I? I I had not shot it then. I had not shot it. That was before a little bit cheaper. I don't think you were shooting anything when we invited you or whatever. But but that's 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 cool to know that you you got back to Toronto after we invited you. You're kind of cheating on us, but that's good. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's only okay. Because he he, he came to the um Total Black Film Festival yeah. um, to um, receive an award that we were giving him, but mostly to uh, also, um, he was uh, um, in a film and it's a film um, by Sadie Gossett, his yeah. uh, son. So that was a great experience. We had a great time in Toronto. And then I thought that was the only great time Mr. Gossett ever had in Toronto. And then yeah. I hear that he was having fun shooting with you. So. <laughs> He know he knows all the good restaurants, so I, I know. More, I don't know more, more, anymore. more to the story, <laughs> and also also Montreal, obviously, where there's music and there's culture. It's just two great cities. Yeah, we have a great jazz festival here, by the way, guys. And I know you know, but it is quite a, a, a ride, quite an experience. People are coming from all over the world. Maybe not this year because you know with the. Um, because of the coronavirus, but this is really uh, somewhere, you know, you would see all kind of jazz and then whether it's from, you know, Afro-Cuban jazz or from America or from anywhere, by the way. So let's get back to the film, The Cuban. No, I was saying, um, Sergio, a lot of people are asking questions. Some are really uh, mesmerized by the fact that you are a non-black director taking a chance on a diverse film, which is actually what we've been advocating um, for. We want more people that are, we want more men to hire more women in their yeah. films. We want more, you know, Caucasian people or other non-black people to also hire black people and then diverse people in their films as well, you know, which you are doing. So, which is uh, amazing. I know some people wanted to know about that, but I know that you answered it um, before, but yeah, that was the question that kept coming, kept coming. We had 60, I think 61% of women uh, all these things are not deliberate, honestly. The cinematographer, she's from, originally from Mexico, but she's Canadian, Siliana Cardenas. She was the best person for the job. I mean, mm -hmm. her passion, an artist to the soul. I mean, a great collaborator, somebody that I could cry on her shoulder when we needed to and hug it out and talk about things that are profound about life, about the scenes, about the movie. Um, you know, most of the people in two positions were female. It just happened that way, you know? But I just hope we get to a point where we don't even have to have the discussion. It's just normal, you know? 
But is it not so it's normal for you, but for so many people it's not. And that's why we need um some rules and quotas and incentive and affirmative some people it's not normal whatsoever. Well so that, you, exactly do you look for that. Do you look for that in a story, in a script where before you accept something? Are you looking for diversity? Is it a conscious choice? No, it's not conscious. Uh I never no, it's just like things that I'm curious about, things that I'm interested in, things that I'm passionate about. I mean, you know, sure, there's a part of me that loves the plight of, of an, a, an underdog story, a Rocky story or anything like that, you know. But, um, yeah, I, I just think, you know, until this year, I didn't think we needed to talk about it. I think I thought it was obvious, but obviously it's not. And um, if there's anything that I can do to further that narrative, that conversation, you know, a hundred percent. And I think, you know, the Oscars made a bold move. They said enough is enough. If you need this to get you thinking about it, then that's what we're going to do. And I applaud them because that is it's amazing. It's yeah. courageous and it needed to be done. That's exactly what the, you were saying, Lou. Yeah. I think uh, uh, what's new uh, is the magnificent story of the three kings of your country. That's a lean squeeze stuff over to you. We need to do that properly on a major screen. You know, you know you're, you're three kings. You know that, don't you? Uh -huh. Stuff, Louverture, and Dessalines. Uh -huh. Put that in, in, on film in a miniseries. It's time. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. it's, the right, it's the right audience to know that one story. Uh -huh. Are you, Lou, on that question, is do you feel sometimes um, people tend to not open up and then tell other stories like this, for example, because they're really concentrated on local stories? So how would a film like that get ever get told? They need to know, because when they, like, I finished the Book of Negroes, for example, Roots and others, people are very curious, but they don't think they ever get a chance to opportunity. And when they get the opportunity, they swallow it like water. They eat it up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. can't get the film, just put it out there and see what they grab. The people thought that Roots would never make it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, it was the Book of Negroes. And so you can't guess. You just have to put it with your heart and soul. And uh -huh. let's, let's, let's put it with people. And they're, 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 they're flooding to us, our stories now, because it's the most, most absent stuff. It'll find its own level. Uh -huh. right now, it's very exciting. Everybody is uh, fascinated by Toussaint Louverture, um, rightfully so, because he was he's one of our heroes. And I know I know uh, there have been some um, miniseries or some other independent films done uh, about him. Uh, one, especially with my friend Jimmy Jean Louis um, yeah. as uh, Louverture, but also I know Danny Glover has been working on something about uh, Toussaint Louverture for the longest time. But finding the funding for this. Is hard. We'll find out. We'll find out. We can't say. I, I tell young people to take the word impossible out of the dictionary. Yeah, yeah, that's a good start. That's a good start. But okay. I, I think I think somehow too, um, I feel maybe 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 I'm completely out of it. But I feel sometimes Hollywood, where the money is really the big money, I feel sometimes um, there is a tendency to 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 finance things may be closer to home, which maybe is not serving, you know, other stories around the yeah. world, maybe to be told, I don't know. Is it? Uh... As we speak, it's becoming quite diverse, even as we speak, because the influence of the other countries are now taking the Oscars. The last three Oscars, so now we're opening the doors for everybody's attention. The, the, the other things that are happening, whether they like it or not, it's becoming quite international. So maybe our first Italian director to get an Oscar might be right there in that square box below you there. He deserves it. Yes. So he gets a chance, his opportunity to tell a wonderful story of his dream and he gets paid attention to. I'm very happy to see this diversity in our business. It's Absolutely. about And then you know what, Sergio, the good news is you would be, you would qualify for that big prize of best picture because you qualify all the all the rules for the oscars i mean yes you have tons of women tons of visible minorities in major roles um you know so that that's amazing you you just need two 
You just need two. At least you have these two for sure. <laughs> yeah, literally, if you ask me, but you know, you have to ask others too. But uh, he's my favorite person, I love him, and his son. His son is my hero. <laughs> Thank you. He's a real fan. You can see that he's a real fan. So, what do we, what do we, what do we hope um, for you, um, to you, uh, Sergio, after this amazing film? Um, where do you go next? I'm gonna go to Atlanta and move in with Lou. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, that's where the action is. I, listen, man. I, I, I experienced a month down there eating soul food. I gained 20 pounds and uh, I, really miss it, man. I really miss, I miss the South and uh, you never know, but it's, yeah, it's just trying to find, it's like a, it's like a great romance or a love affair or a relationship. You, it has to be something that really knocks your socks off and gets you out of bed in the morning and, and uh, is bigger than you. And that the Cuban, that's what the Cuban was for me. It just, I felt like I was on a bull just coming along for the ride. Um, so I, I'm open to the universe, you know, whatever comes, comes. Open, yeah. Are you working on something right now? Are you working on your next project? Not yet. Not yet. You're looking for that, uh, You're dreaming right now. <laughs> for that, for that other project. Um, Mr. Gossett, Louis, I, I, I checked IMDb recently. I saw so many projects attached to your name. Some are announced, some are pre-production, post-production, and production. I mean, hey, this is amazing. I say the same How thing. How do you do that? I can't do it all, but uh, people figure if they use my name, they can get the, get the money. But there is stuff already in the can. So we could be talking about the Fox the Boy. We could be talking about the, 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 uh, the reason. You're talking about some other things that are already in the can that uh, I'm excited about. Oh, that's stuff in the not too distant future, like the one in Haiti uh, about uh, the three kings and, and what happened when they defeated Napoleon. Mm -hmm. I you know, you need to know those stories to round out their, 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 their. There's so many beautiful stories to tell. That's a no, that's a no, no, no problem. There's no, it's, there's nothing to cry about. There's so many stories that have come out of the woodwork these days that mm -hmm. you, Amy Glover and and all of us have to do now, and we are. It's the 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 the, the, the climate is beautiful. Absolutely, and ever since Black Panther as well, it seems like there's more money in you know to encourage this kind of uh, stories, like black stories, stories with black you know yeah. black characters and everything else. You would say yeah, it's international. It's a very nice place to be. It's like a European city. Uh huh. It's very nice. It's very nice. It's very ripe to be amongst people around the world who live here now. To make this place a, a nice film society. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. So, Sergio, we're invited. Um, we're invited. <laughs> it seems like we're invited. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll be going there and check it out. Yeah. Um, amazing. Oh, wow. What, how nice talking to you guys. And, and the, the Watchmen, congratulations to Mr. Gossett on his Emmy nomination. We'll all be watching on Sunday night. Sunday. Super Absolutely. Excited. Absolutely, and rooting for you, definitely. Well, so, I, I have to, so I want to vote it for the young man. I'm very grateful that at this age of my career that I have, they remember the name. I'm very humbled by that. But there's 26 nominations for that in ministry. It's exactly what we've been talking about for the last hour. Wow. Very exciting. Wow. The door is open for you, girl. The door is open for you, ragazzo. The door is open when you want to knock on the door to get something to eat, and shake hugs. The doors open. Definitely, that's very inspiring. One thing I wanted to say, um, Lou, is there are a lot of young directors, mm -hmm. um, young producers listening to us right now. They look up to you. They've been seeing, you know, watching a lot of things that you've done. Um, and if somebody would like to have a uh, star power like you would like to have somebody like uh, you on this film or work with it. It, it and that person doesn't have this long resume this long you know list of accomplishment yet um it's gonna be his first or second or third film is lou gossett jr approachable for that young director uh, or producer they have to get past my staff very intelligent very feeling they know what i like and what i don't like and they have to read it first otherwise i would have nothing to do but read 24 7. I've got to do life with my grandchildren and my food and everything else. 
So to, to give do justice to those young people, I, I encourage them. I'm trying to put together a, 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 an organization where there's enough readers, and if something sticks out, then they'll let me know about it, and we'll go accordingly that way. Otherwise, I would have no life. I want to be of service, but I can't let it take over the rest of my life. Uh -huh. Life is really good. I get to speak to, to, to people like uh, work with, with Sergio, and people as beautiful as you are. I, I can't be busy reading when somebody offers me something. I like life today the way it is. So if anybody has something that's special, they'll have to go through this this kind of system. People are who trust. But but my point is that Lou is open to considering yes, working, perhaps if it's a good script with people that are younger, that are emerging, that also have a, a, a great project. Right, the door is not locked. The door is not okay. Locked. Good, because I know that I've been asked this question. That's fantastic. You too, don't you, in the back pocket, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Okay, let me know. I'll be yeah, there. if there's anything coming, yeah, we'll let you know. Because we are developing a rooster of um, emerging black artists in Canada, in Montreal, Toronto, Halifax, and everywhere. And then soon enough, we'll be in Calgary, Vancouver, and... Um, Ottawa with a program called Being Back in Canada. And I know they were very excited, some of them, when, when they knew you, um, the Cuban opened the festival and then there will be a Q&A. So um, I kind of feel like there might be some interest there somehow. So uh, I wanted to get this question in there. So um, I'm not going to keep you guys for longer because it's been amazing. You've been very generous. Um, the film, The Cuban, is something that everybody should watch. Um, I was transformed, inspired, and uplifted after I saw it. Wow. And thank, thank Emile Castonguet, our program director, and Joyce Fossa, our head coordinator and head senior programmer of the Montreal Black Film Festival, for choosing this film as the opening film, the, because it is a must-see film. So um, I hope everybody will definitely dive into it. Is there one thing, Sergio, you would like people to know about this film before we wrap this off? This up? Just that it's it's heartfelt. Uh, it was a collective labor of love. There's a lot of people that put a lot of love and effort into it. And uh, just the hope that it touches people and uplifts people because we're, we're in a time, an unprecedented time that uh, none of us have experienced in our lifetime. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I hope everybody enjoys it. And it's such an honor to open a festival so important like this in such a great city. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much for that. Merci thank you to you for putting that together. Um, merci beaucoup, Louis. Merci beaucoup. Merci. And then we will be waiting for you guys in Montreal. When we get the vaccine, okay? Don't come yet. <laughs> Wait for the vaccine. And when we get the vaccine, Louis, um, Sergio and I, we will come to you as well. Please, it'll be one of us continuing our, our, our dialogue. There's other things to talk about. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's been a thrill to have you guys on. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you, Mr. Gossett. Thank you, brother. Good luck Sunday, man. We'll be uh, we'll be cheering. You might hear us from it from down where you are. <laughs> oh my God! Very excited. Very excited. Very so, excited. Okay. Doing talk to you soon. Thank you for the time. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you Thank to you, you guys. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thank and you, um, so, so Wednesday, um, September 23rd is the opening night. Tell everybody because we don't want anybody to miss it. So there you go. Okay. Bye-bye, Sergio. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Gracias. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank right. you again. So guys, uh, that was a conversation with Sergio Navarreta and Lucas Jr. Sergio is the director of the film The Cuban and uh, Lucas Jr. is the main actor um, in the film. I, I should say Academy Award winner Lucas Jr. Um, and uh, the film The Cuban. And then we have also a French version if you want a French version called Le Cuban. Um, and it's gonna be the opening film of the Montreal International Black Film Festival on September 23rd till October 4th. It's gonna be available, but the opening is at 7 p.m. on September 
23rd. So don't miss it. Now, how do you go and watch that film? How do you get, do you get access to the film? You need to buy your all access pass um, because we don't sell individual tickets. The all access pass will give you access to all the films at the festival. We have 120 films, over 120 films from 30 countries at this 16th edition of the Montreal International Black Film Festival. So um, by buying your all access pass for $49 only, you get to watch everything you want from September 27, uh, 23rd until October 4th. So the festival is presented by Quebecois in collaboration with um, Desjardins. So we thank you for being here for um, this intimate conversation. And uh, we catch each other um, on the other side. And for all information, go to Montreal Black Film dot com. My name is Fabienne Kola and I'm the president and founder of the festival. Ciao, ciao.